In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the first three chords that you're most likely to play on your ukulele. With just these three chords it's possible to play literally hundreds of well-known songs. We will also be looking at understanding the chord box diagrams that you will often see on song sheets. The chords we're looking at today are C, F and G7. These are what are known as the primary chords in the key of C major. Before we get into learning these three very useful chords, please consider subscribing to the channel as it really helps me making more of these video tutorials moving forward. A chord is a series of normally three or more notes or pitches played simultaneously by strumming or plucking all the strings of our ukulele in order to accompany a melody being sung or played by a solo instrument. Most songs have a repeating sequence of several different chords, a chord progression, throughout that create movement and emotion and harmonise with the singer or the solo instrument. On many song sheets, lead sheets and sheet music, you will often see chord diagrams above the lyrics or the music that show you where to change from one chord to another. For ukulele, these will look something like this. They may not always have the numbers that you see on the black dot here, but otherwise this is pretty much the industry standard for ukulele chords. The chord box diagram shown here represents the first four frets of our ukulele, the part of the ukulele fretboard above my fingers. The slightly thicker black line at the top represents the nut of the ukulele here, and the thinner horizontal lines below representing the metal fret wires. The vertical lines represent the strings, with the string to the left side of the diagram being the G string, the one nearest our face when we're holding the ukulele in playing position, and the string to the right hand side of the diagram being the A string, the one nearest the floor. It's worth noting at this point that for anyone playing their ukulele left handed, the strings would be the other way around, and the chord diagram would be a mirror image of the one shown on the screen, something like this. For the sake of the rest of this video, all the chord diagrams and instruction will be for the right-handed player. If you are left-handed, it would probably be a good idea to get yourself a good left-handed chord book, as I'm afraid nearly all chord sheets will only have right-handed diagrams. The spaces between the fret wires are what are known as the frets of our ukulele, and this is where we place our fingers of our left hand in order to change the pitch of the string. The black dot with the number three in this diagram is telling us to place the tip of our third finger, our ring finger, at the third fret of the string nearest the floor, the A string. We want to make sure our fingertip is pushing the string down between the second and third fret wires, but ideally as close to the third fret wire as possible, without actually being on top of the fret wire and muffling the string. We want to be holding our ukulele with the neck at around a 45 degree angle, and I'd suggest playing sitting down to start with. That way we can rest the bottom bout of our ukulele, this area here, on our right thigh. If you want it to sit higher up, try crossing your right leg over your left, and this will naturally make your playing position a bit higher. The neck should loosely be cradled in the relaxed left hand, and your thumb can either be placed on the back of the neck, like this, or it can be placed above the fretboard, like so. Experiment with which is more comfortable for you. You may find this will vary from chord shape to chord shape. Then if we strum across all four strings at the point where the neck joins the body of our ukulele, using our thumb or a finger of our right hand, with the fingertip of our third finger pushing down here at the third fret of the string nearest the floor, we have what is known as a C or a C major chord. Our first chord on the ukulele. It's worth noting that the numbers in the black dots are only a suggestion as to which finger you use to fret the string. You may feel more comfortable fretting the string with a different left hand finger, and it may also depend a little bit on what chord is coming next as to which fingers you use to fret the chord. As I said before, you will often see these chord diagrams without any numbers, and then it's completely up to you to work out which fingers are gonna work best for you in order to fret each chord. In the case of this chord, only the string nearest the floor is fretted at the third fret, and all of the other strings remain unfretted, or what we would normally refer to as open strings. We would normally see this chord labelled just C, as per the chord diagram, but its full name is C major. Wherever we see a chord with just a letter as its name, C, F, G, etc., 
it's a major chord. If it's any other sort of chord, it will have something written after the letter which determines its quality. Minor, seventh, etc. When learning to fret any new chord, it's a good idea when initially strumming the chord to play the strings individually from the string nearest your face to the string nearest the floor, like so. This way you'll be able to hear if any string is muffled or muted due to poor fretting. With the C chord, it's unlikely that you'll have any problems with this, as you're only fretting one string and it's the one nearest the floor, with little chance of you touching other strings with the same finger. As you'll see in a minute, there's much more chance of this happening with the other two chords we'll be looking at. Once you're happy that all the strings are ringing clearly, try strumming all four strings in one downward motion with your right hand, thumb, finger or fingers. I'm not going to go into right hand strumming in this tutorial, but if you click on the card linked above, it will take you to a video on four simple strumming patterns to get you started. The next chord we're going to be looking at is F major. This time we're going to be fretting two of the strings and leaving two strings open. So still holding your ukulele at the same 45 degree angle, with a relaxed left hand, place your left hand index fingertip in the first fret of the second string from the floor, the E string, making sure it has a nice curl in it so that it's not accidentally touching the string below it. Then bring your second fingertip across to the second fret of the string nearest your face, the G string, again making sure it has a nice curl in it so as not to touch any of the strings below. You may need to experiment with the angle of your wrist in order to do this, and often by dropping your wrist like so, it will make the chord a little easier to fret. Remember your fretting fingers want to be as close to the fret wire to the right as possible without actually being on the fret wire, or at least in the middle of the fret between the fret wires. Once you feel you have the chord fretted correctly, try again to play the strings individually from the string nearest your face to the string nearest the floor. in order that you can hear if any strings are poorly fretted and hence muted. If you do have a muted string, do a visual check, see what might be causing it. The most common problem will be that a fretting finger will accidentally be touching the string below it. Once you've worked out what the issue is, try to adjust your hand accordingly and get the strings to sound cleanly. Try to keep your hand relaxed, as a beginner, it's very common for you to tense up, so try to stay relaxed, and if your hand is hurting, stop what you're doing, shake your hand and wrist out, and try again. So once you feel you have all the strings sounding clearly when playing them individually, it should sound something like this. Then try just strumming all four strings at once, like so. So now we can play an F or F major chord. We now have two chords in our repertoire, C and F. F is obviously the slightly harder of the two chords, so try initially changing from F to the easier C chord. First, just try playing one strum of F and then changing to one strum of C. Look at what your fingers have to do in order to do this. Using the suggested fingering of the chord diagrams, fingers one and two play the F chord, and then we swap to finger three for the C chord. Try going the other way around from C to F, and try to get the change from one chord to another nice and smooth. Take as much time as you need over this. Feel free to stop the video whilst you do so. Now try the same chord changes, but play four down strums of F before changing to the C, then four strums of C before changing back to the F. Try to keep both your strums and your chord changes even, like this, F to C. C. 
and you don't want to have a big gap where you're thinking about the chord change and trying to get your fingers into position. Don't worry if this takes you a little while to get, practice and repetition is the key. So the third and final chord we'll be looking at today is the G7 chord. This is what's known as a dominant chord and its function is to create musical tension and push us to resolve back home to the C chord. As you can see from the diagram, this chord has three fretted strings and one open string. The way I'm going to suggest building this chord to start with is to start by fretting the F chord, the shape we've just learned. Now, keeping your first finger in the same place it's already in, think of it as a pivot between the two chords, take your second finger off the fourth string, the one nearest to your face, and bring it down to the same fret but on the third string from the floor, the C string. Notice as I make this movement, my wrist moves out to the left a bit. You don't have to do this to change strings with the second finger, but if you do, it will make getting your third finger into the second fret of the string nearest the floor much easier for you, or at least it does for most people. So after moving that second finger to the second fret of the third string, now try adding your third finger, your ring finger, to the second fret of the string nearest the floor to complete the G7 chord. Everyone's hand anatomy is slightly different, and some people will find this easier than others. Some may not have to move their wrist at all in order to get that third finger where it has to go. Again, once you think you have your fingers in the correct place, try playing the strings individually, from the string nearest your face to the string nearest the floor again. Check for any muted or muffled strings. I had one there. And adjust your hand accordingly. With three fingers now fretting the strings, there's even more chances of problems. So keep that fretting hand as relaxed as possible and try small adjustments of the hand or the wrist to get comfortable with the chord. When you're happy that you have a clean sounding G7, try changing between it and the other two chords we've learned. First try changing from G7 to C, which should feel reasonably easy as we're moving to the easiest of the three chords. Then try changing from C to G7. This initially is going to feel much harder, but with practice will get easier. Then try going back and forth between these two chords. Try initially with a single strum, as I'm doing. And then try four strums of each chord before changing to the next and back again. Next, try changing from F to G7 and see how nice the pivot of keeping that first finger in the same position for both chords feels. Practice going back and forth between these chords, both with single strums, and also four strums of each chord before changing to the next and back again. Lastly, practice going from C to F to G7, both as single chords and also with the four strums per chord. Eventually, you'll need to be comfortable with changing back and forth between all three chords. As I said at the beginning, with just these three chords, there are literally hundreds of well-known songs you can play. You won't necessarily be in the same key as the original, and it would obviously help having the chord sequence for the song and a few strumming patterns under your belt, but a large percentage of rock and roll, blues, folk, reggae, and pop songs use the three primary chords of the key in differing sequences. And some, or sections of some, literally just cycle around the order you've just learned the chords in. A few quick examples of these. Parabalalabanda. 
Well, shake it, shake it up, baby, now. Twist and shout. The tide is high, but I'm holding on. I'm gonna be a number one. Stare it up. I'll sit down, I'll sit down, I'll sit down, sit down next to me, sit down, 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 down. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel as I regularly post new videos for ukulele at all different levels. Please give the video a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.